the last four months have been brutal. In so many ways, we are still in the thick of it. Still disoriented, still grieving, still deeply uncertain about what tomorrow will bring. But if there's one thing that I know for certain, it's this, that we cannot go back to where we were before COVID-19 hit our shores. We cannot go back to normal because that normal was broken. Normal was an essential worker who was not being paid a living wage. Normal was 130,000 Americans that have lost their lives to a pandemic and a healthcare sector that lacked basic supplies. Normal was a country that elected Donald Trump. Normal was a commonwealth where the median net worth of a black family in Boston was $8. For a Dominican family, zero. We don't want that normal back. So if there is an opportunity, if there is a silver lining to this crisis. It is the chance to build something better from this wreckage. Our recovery from this moment is going to be the work of a generation. Over 45 million Americans have lost their jobs in the past three months alone. Just over 50% of working age Americans have jobs, the lowest number in 70 years. Almost 20% of all renting families in this country, 20% are at risk of eviction by the end of September. An estimated 25 million Americans have lost or will lose their employer-sponsored health care during this pandemic. 25 million people more without health care. This crisis has highlighted the myriad cracks in our system the injustices and the inadequacies of a modern American economy. Because for decades, we have failed to center justice and equality in federal policymaking, and failed to center working men and women as corporate profits have climbed. Now, as we undertake the difficult work of recovering and rebuilding, we not only have an obligation to provide immediate relief to every American family, but the responsibility to rethink, refashion, and rebuild an economy into something better. The Kennedy Jobs and Justice Initiative proposes a massive national mobilization and federal hiring program targeted in two phases. First, the immediate crisis response as we confront a still very much a country that is still very much in the crosshairs of a dangerous pandemic. And second, long-term recovery in public works. A plan to put America back to work in a way that fortifies an economy for generations to come, rather than exploit an American worker. With a focus on equality, on intersectionality, on anti-racism, it treats the injustice in our country today not as an economic afterthought, but at the heart of our work ahead. Phase one of the JJI, states and municipalities will identify areas of need in their ongoing COVID response. And the federal government will fund hiring opportunities for safe jobs that are critical to our emergence from this pandemic, from contact testing, and tracing to sanitizing, manufacturing, small business support, and social services. In phase two, after the acute healthcare crisis has passed, the JJI will implement a large scale public works and federal hiring program aimed at putting Americans back to work while addressing some of the stubborn failures of our current economy, from infrastructure to clean energy to racial disparities. It is a roadmap for a just, equal, and resilient post-COVID America, where we are never again caught as unprepared and as vulnerable as we were when COVID hit our shores, where we orient our system towards people over profits, where prosperity is shared, not hoarded for a few. 
What I'm announcing today is a proposal. It is a working draft. It is a living, breathing document that will inform a legislative path ahead. Because my promise to you is that as your next senator, I will not legislate without you at the table. Yeah. Over the weeks ahead, I will travel across our Commonwealth. I will share this proposal, I will listen, and I will hear your feedback, particularly from those most impacted and most often left out from these decisions. Working families, black and Latinx communities, organized labor, small businesses, low wage communities, and our essential workers. I want these reforms to reflect the voices of Massachusetts. Because my job in Washington is to make sure that your voices are heard, that you have a seat at this table, that our policy reflects your reality every single day, particularly when those decisions are being made. Out of this devastation, we have a moment. We have an extraordinary opportunity to get this right, to rally together, to remedy the decades of failed policies that have not served working families in Massachusetts, and to build something better for our future. And for that, I'm all in. Thank you all for being here. Thank you for letting me join you. Let's go get this done.